My name is Steve Choi, and this is my Korean American story. I am turning 40 years old. Uh, it's funny, I forgot how old I was uh, earlier this year. Uh, and I'm the executive director currently of the New York Immigration Coalition. Um, and I've been involved with the community for, I would say, maybe the past 15 years. The formative experience that I have, and I think this part partly explains some of what I do now and the kind of person that I am, but I was, you know, as an Asian kid, you know, wearing glasses, looking goofy as all hell, you know, to go out there on the basketball court, like basketball was my favorite sport. And, you know, immediately everyone discounts you. Like, who's this short little Asian kid wearing glasses? Like, what's he doing on the court with us? And, and it, like, I just got used to having a chip on my shoulder, being underestimated, people, like, not, you know, and, and having a burning desire to show them wrong. And, it, and, and even to this day, like, I feel like that, in some ways, it's like a, it, it continues to drive me. You know, like I'll, I'll tell all the people I work with, whatever I said, don't praise me and tell me how great I am. I don't care about that. Tell me that I didn't do this or I didn't do that or I'm not succeeding. And okay, I'm in the game. Now I'm ready to show you. Now I'm ready to bust my butt to show you exactly how wrong you are. So, you know, in some ways, my sports experience um, was both a, a way for me to sort of assimilate and gain respect with a lot of my white peers, but it also kind of like engendered in me this kind of like chip on my shoulder that has remained there ever since. And I think in some ways it's a good thing. I, it, it drives me and it keeps me up at night to, be, to do the best that I can. And I think it's responsible for whatever success that, I, that I've had. I was just ready to figure out like who I was as an individual and so I wanted to go as far as possible in Stanford you know I mean you look at the brochures you see the palm trees you're like I'm, I'm down with this right I'm ready to do this and so I went there and it was pretty disjointed but I think the thing I'll always take out of my experience at college was number one I started to learn about you know about history and about things like imperialism things like colonialism things like you know, racial discrimination, things like white skin privilege that I'd never really thought about before. And at the same time I was learning about that, I also started to really think about, you know, who am I as a Korean American? Like, wh what's my role? What's my space in, in all of this? And, and, you know, what is my identity? So there really was this moment, I would say starting my sophomore year in college, where my mind just started to completely open up and I started to think about questions of social justice and my identity as a Korean American and what that obligation was on me to both really embrace that in a way I'd never done before. You know, I was graduating from Stanford and, um, you know, I was and, and just really into my studies at this point, really into thinking through social justice. I did a bunch of interviews at, uh, and internships at these Korean American organizations. And I realized after my senior year, I did an internship at the Korean Youth and Community Center in Los Angeles. Um, and there's a guy there named Do Kim and, you know, I mean, he has probably played this incredible mentorship role for hundreds of Korean American kids out there. Um, so I participated in this internship program that he did and I just learned a tremendous amount. And I realized that I didn't know what I wanted to do after college, but I knew that if I was going to be working with the Korean American community, which is something I started to want to do, that I'd better, number one, learn how to speak Korean and number two, learn a little bit more about what it meant to be Korean and to learn about Korean studies, around Korean economics, around you know Korean culture, all that stuff. So I decided I wanted to get a master's degree in Korean studies and University of Hawaii was one of the few places that has a you know Korean studies program. Now everyone I talked to says, well that was probably fifth on the list of reasons why you went to the University of Hawaii, right? Um, but uh, you know they did have a really good program. They offered me like a scholarship to go there and so you know, after that internship, I packed up my bags and I flew directly to Hawaii. And actually in Hawaii, I realized one thing about myself, is that I need to be, you know, I gotta be doing like 10 different things at once. I can't just be sitting here doing one thing. I need to be involved in like a number of different things. Um, and so one of the things that I, that kind of like filled that void for me was I started this Korean Student Association at the University of Hawaii. And, and that really got my you know, juices flowing. I said, I would talk to these other kids and I would say, you know, let's create a Korean Student Association. There doesn't exist one now, there should, right? Like, it's all these Korean students here. And it was remarkable because the reaction of Korean students, the Korean American students I was talking with was, you know, it was out of this world. They were so enthusiastic. 
there you don't have the kind of Korean success stories that define mainstream America, right? You don't have these, you know, blue collar, you know, uh, liquor store owners that send their kids to Ivy Leagues. Um, the stereotype of Koreans there is that you're going to grow up, you know, um, I had one girl come up to me and say, I'm so glad that you created this Korean Student Association because everybody had always made fun of me my whole life that I would either work at a Korean restaurant or I would be like a hostess at a Korean bar. And there, Korean bar means hostess bar. So, you know, it's a remarkable kind of social landscape there. In the middle of that kind of context, you know, the, the idea of creating a Korean Student Association, being proud of being Korean American, was a very sort of radical concept. Um, so it was my first sort of experience in community organizing where, you know, I got a bunch of Korean kids that I knew and I said, let's create a Korean Student Association. Let's do a Thanksgiving food drive. And, you know, let's do a, a $5,000 fundraising drive and let's go to CASCON, you know, this Korean American Student Conference. And we did that and then, you know, um, the second year we said, let's be really ambitious and let's do this Korean Community Festival, which we haven't never really had in, in, in Hawaii. And that ended up becoming a monumental undertaking that we were completely ill-equipped to handle. And I just think back now. Um, but that was like, that was an incredibly seminal experience for me because I, you know, I helped to create something. You know, I, I was able to like lay out a vision for it, I said, and I was able to actually get people excited to actually participate in that. And I think having that experience was a tremendous learning experience for me you know, in my, all my sort of efforts moving forward, because it gave me the confidence to say, okay, there's nothing here, we're gonna create something here. We're gonna build something here. This is how it can roll out. And I've done this before, so I, you know, I'm confident that we can do that. Um, and, and that is definitely sort of a hallmark of my career so far. So there are two things that really happened. One is I, I did an internship at this organization called WICASEC. Um, and uh, it was actually, well, NACASEC, the National Korean American um, Student uh, Service and Education Consortium. And, and it actually happened because I went to this CASCON that was actually at Stanford. And, and I met Chung Wah Hong, who at the time was the executive director of NACASEC. And she explained what the organization did. And I said, that sounds great. I'm really interested in working with the community. Um, I want to be the summer intern. And, uh, and then I went back to Hawaii and I submitted my application. And I'll always remember, you know, I called them, I hadn't heard from them, and I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do that summer, and I called them and I said, I just wanna know, have I been selected for the internship or not? And they said, actually, no, no, you haven't, I'm sorry about that. And I said, okay, all right, that's fine, I'll figure out what else I'm gonna do. And then I got a frantic call 15 minutes later saying, oh, no, actually, you were the one that was selected for the internship. I don't know if they called the other person, and the other person, like, declined, and then they're like, let's go with number two. I don't know exactly what happened, but, you know, it's, it's pretty funny, because if it had not been for that second, phone call, I probably would not be here today. This is the summer of 1999. This is in between my two years in Hawaii. So I came back and I interned um, at this organization in Flushing. Um, and NACASEC is still sort of this national Korean American um, consortium. And at the time, WICASEC was the New York affiliate and they had, you know, one staff member. And, and uh, but I had this amazing time. I mean, the, the group of folks that's involved with Waikasek and Nakasek. They're all part of this YKU movement. And it's an incredibly inspiring group of these progressive Korean immigrants and, and some Korean Americans who are dedicated to social justice. And I became exposed to them and it was a it was a mind blowing experience. Like these were people who were so dedicated to progressive political change, to understanding the power of communities to, you know, voice their concerns and um, you know, this is after Nakasek had just come off this amazing campaign um, in the late 90s where basically President Clinton had cut back on immigrant rights and green card holders were no longer able to get food stamps. You know, Halmanis who are green card holders, you know, like all of a sudden they're, they're going to go hungry. So they had launched this paper plate campaign where all these Halmanis and Halmanis would write on these paper plates and send them to the White House and say, please restore my food stamps, you know, please restore immigrant rights. And, um, you know, Chungwa had really sort of made a name for herself as part of that campaign, was invited to the signing ceremony and everything. So they were really coming off uh, a pretty extraordinary set of victories and, um, and a lot of really impactful initiatives. And so I was exposed to that. I was exposed to this amazing group of incredibly committed individuals. And I said, this is, I like this. This is, this is something that I can do, right? I think a lot of it is the chip on the shoulder thing. You know, I think 
there's, there's the reasons why I do the work that I do, and then there's the reasons why I want my organization to be the best, and there's a reason why I'm driven to succeed myself, but to push other people and everybody around me. Like I, you know, you talk to every all my staff, they will tell you that I have, you know, pretty high standards, and I will not, you know, hesitate to let people know. Like this is what I expect, this is what I want to be doing. You know, I don't think anyone says, oh, no, Steve is lacking, you know, an ambition for the organization or he, 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 you know, he doesn't have big goals for the organization. Nobody will say that. <laughs> like so, call you an able to. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they may say, he's fighting off a little more than he can chew. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that, I think part of that is because, you know, when, and I didn't really have to struggle that much. Like, I grew up in a pretty, you know, well-to-do um, time, but I think, um, for whatever reason, you know, this, this chip on my shoulder has pushed me, you know, and it has really driven me a lot of times, like being, feeling, you know, feeling ignored, feeling overlooked, feeling like people doubt my abilities or doubt me or doubt whatever it is. I, I kind of transfer that to the work that I do and it really pushes me.